Is liberty dying where you live? Escape to Keen at freekeen.com. All right, I think we're all set. Everybody's gone to the bathroom at this point. I'm going to introduce our uh, closing speaker, the keynote speech for Saturday night here at Key Invention. First, I want to thank everybody for staying on and uh, enjoying uh, the convention so far. I've gotten lots of great uh, compliments, and I really appreciate everybody being here to listen to these wonderful uh, speakers that we have. This next guy is a personal friend of mine. I consider him uh, like a brother. We've lived uh, pretty much together, not in the same room, but really close for a long time. He was uh, a manager, probably... Um, one of my favorites, maybe the my favorite manager of the uh, the Keen Activist Center, uh, JJ Schlesinger is uh, is an amazing activist who's put a lot of his uh, his life and his free time and his money into doing this activism. Not only was he really talented at running the Activism Center, uh, he's also been uh, active in the world of video, as he mentioned during the news media panel. Earlier today, uh, he was involved heavily in Free Keen TV, which is uh, a television program that ran for an entire year uh, here on Public Access TV. And if you've ever done live television, this was a live show. If you've done recorded television, you know how difficult of a task that is. Uh, you've got to get the lighting set up. You've got to get you know, the people in the chairs in the right positions, the cameras, and there's a crew, and everybody's got to be coordinated. Well, he was the guy who did that coordinating. He did all the right, almost all the writing for the show. He did the editing uh, for the show. I mean, it it was a team effort, but without JJ, it wouldn't have been possible. And it was a vision that uh, we'd always tossed around for years here in, in Keene. Hey, we should do a new show. Well, JJ took the ball. He ran with that. And uh, and I hope that we'll see more people doing that kind of thing, whether it's in Keene or in Manchester or whatever. But I think he really set the bar pretty high for that. Uh, he also, as I mentioned, ran the Keene Activist Center and now is running the Quill in Manchester, which, you know, he's gone up uh, a notch, I think, because the Quill is definitely a more complicated operation. It's a lot larger. There are a lot more members, and and hopefully it's profitable from what I hear now, or at least covering its costs. So maybe JJ can actually make some money at this uh, activism thing because he's been he's been living a, a pretty pretty difficult activist life uh, up until this point. He's uh, he's somebody I have a lot of respect for, and he's a hell of a singer. And I believe you're going to karaoke tonight. So if you're at the uh, the bowling alley and uh, you get a chance, make sure you drop in uh, when JJ sings because uh, we miss him being here in Keene at karaoke. He was definitely one of the best. Uh, JJ, you're next. Thank you. Come on, give it up for Ian. Come on now. This is all Ian's brainchild. He is top-notch activist. Never stops, never quits. So... Ian is part of the reason I moved here. Uh, Ian and Dave Ridley, the, the media panel earlier, you all saw Dave Ridley. I moved here because at the time, Keene was the liberty media destination capital of the world, and I wanted to be a part of that media. So I, I definitely was influenced by Ian and Mr. Ridley and what they did. So I moved here and quickly started getting a job, and then I was like, you know what, I moved here to do activism. So after three years of working, I, I, quit, I quit working to do activism full-time, and that's when I started the uh, Freaking TV and the Akeen Activist Center Management, and that was pretty much the beginning of my sort of activism career. And it's been a th about three years since then. So I'm back working a full-time job. <laughs> because you know what, you got bills to pay, and... If they want to throw money at you, you take it. So I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot of things since moving to Keene, and I've met a lot of wonderful people. And part of that journey has sort of been looking at what's going on here and understanding the greater situation. You know, we, we always talk about striking the root. And when you talk about activism, you listen to the cop block guys, Pete and Ademo, and they always mention strike the root, strike the root, strike the root. Well, strike the root applies to more than just the state. Strike the root applies to your personal life. You know, activism isn't just something you do. Activism is something you are. And you live your activism. You live that sort of lifestyle. It's not just holding a sign. An activist is an activist all the time. They, they believe something different. They want something different. They strive for something different. They want change. And that's what an activist does, is they, they work towards that change by living and being that change. Sometimes it's holding a sign, sometimes it's explaining the situation to other people. Sometimes it's, it's as simple as going on the internet 
and chatting with someone. Because it's, it's little things that really matter. And one of the things that Keen has been really good at, the Keen activist sort of situation, because I, I always, I always want to talk in, in, in terms of individuals. I don't like to collectivize. I don't like to say Keen and refer to all the people. No, there are individuals here in Keen that do certain things, and they're often very different. Like, that's the beautiful thing about what's going on here is that there are many different ways to achieve what you want to achieve, and if you come here to increase liberty, well, you have a different way of doing it than the guy sitting next to you or the lady sitting next to you. And that's important, because the more options, the more ways that people try to spread liberty, the more different people you're going to attract. Because not everybody learns the right way or the same way. Not everybody reads the same papers, and not everybody watches the same videos. So the more irons in the fire, the better it is, and the more fronts. So you have different kinds of activism, and we have a state rep here. I don't know if he's the only one. Michael Sylvia, a wonderful man. Props to him. He's going through the system, and he is, is doing it through the state house and through, as, as the police in Keene would advise you to do, using the system. Well, that's not what Keeniacs really do now, is it? No. No, they, they, they challenge the system, and that is extremely valuable. What happens in Keene is it's something else. And, and, and as a manager of the CAC, I often had many times where I could sit there and I could talk to the newest people that just moved and have this conversation with them, and the conversation went something like this. You've moved here from wherever you are, and it's much different. Not just the climate, not just the culture, not just the location. What I'm talking about that's different is the community. See, you moved here from somewhere where you were probably the only two libertarian people that you knew. Or maybe you knew another one, or, or maybe four total. But when you come here, there are a lot of people that share these same ideas. There's a lot of individuals that believe what you believe and that love what you love. And so you can connect with them much more easily, much quicker and much stronger. And so what the, the new movers that come here, I tell them that, that in six months, you're going to be a different person than you are today. Radically different. I've seen it. I've seen it in so many of the new movers. So many of the people that came here, they are a completely different person in six months. And that's not a bad thing, obviously. I think we should all be striving to be a better person in, in everything we do. But I tell these people, listen, there's a lot of different changes going to happen. There's a lot of things that are going to be unconventional for what you feel is conventional based on your former life. And this person that you're going to be in six months, while they're different, you have a choice as to who that person will be. So you have a choice in who you're going to become. You have a choice in how you're going to get there, and you have a choice in ultimately how long it will take. See, everyone's changing. Everyone's changing from day to day. Whether, whether you realize it or not, it's not a cycle. It's not a cycle in that it repeats itself. It's not a circle in that it repeats itself. It's a, it's a spiral. And sure, the circle goes around, but each iteration is different than the last one. And, and while the changes might be small, sometimes it's the small changes that have the most impact. Like just following your principles for once. You say you have principles. Everyone says, yes, I'm a principled person because we realize that principles are powerful and they're important because principles, they're, they're the, the stone which, which you can hold on to in a time of crises, in a time of need, in a time of desperation. That stone, that principle will remain the same no matter what happens. But changing the, changing the smallest things in a person over time will lead to a dramatic effect. And so these people that move here, I tell them, you're going to change, but you can determine who you're going to become. And that's critical. Because people come here, and they want to do activism, and they want to be active, and they, they want to be a part of this wonderful community. And there's some, some great individuals in this community that have done wonderful things. And many of them have been celebrated here on this stage tonight. And many more aren't here at this moment because they're out doing things. But those people did great things because they chose to. It really came down to that. It's really that simple. You know, these people, they're, they're great people because they've made the decisions to
to lead them to that conclusion. They're not great people because of some magical force or some destiny or some, some roll to the dice. No, no. All of this is a summation of the decisions that you made up to that point. And so every, every person here is changing. But most importantly, those new people that come here and they, they integrate into this community and it's a completely new lifestyle. Whether it's, whether it's hanging out and socializing, finally you have friends, you have a network, you have, you have support behind you. It's more than that because it's, it's, it, it lends a certain courage. And what you find in Keen is courage. What you find is the ability to say, no, what you're doing is wrong, and I'm going to stand up to you. I'm going to tell you so. And that changes the dynamic. When you confront a police officer or a bureaucrat or a state employee, and you are not afraid that changes the dynamic. That paradigm has, has switched. Because these people are expecting you to be afraid, to be, to be bowing to their authority, to who they are and what they hold and their title and their office and, and their badge or their gun. They're expecting that because that's how they're programmed. I mean, life is full of programming. You're well aware of this. You know about public TV and then the whole, the idea of... Uh, Sex cells, sensationalism cells, and drama cells. I mean, that's, that's, it's, it's different, though, when you take a step back outside of that paradigm and you actually act fearless. And that's what Keen instills in people. The activist culture in Keen is one of conf confrontation, but peaceful confrontation. So you, you're going you're gonna to tell someone, no, I don't approve of what you're doing. I think it's wrong. And I think you should stop doing it, but you're not going to shoot them or aggress upon them or beat them until they agree with you. No, that's silly. That's the same tactics they want to use on you, whoever they are, whether they're police officers or bureaucrats or the tax collector or the code enforcement officer. I mean, Keen, you've heard all the stories, whether it starts with the couch, the famous couch incident or the Fred Parcells incidents to follow more recently. So I tell these people that come here, you're going to change and you can determine who you're going to become. But that, that, that message is true for you today, the same it is for anyone that, that shows up here. Whether you're here for six years, ten years, your whole life, it doesn't matter. Each of you is changing. Each of you can determine who you want to become and what you want to do. And it comes back to that saying that you've heard so many times, be the change you want to see in the world. That's what an activist is. An activist is someone who is the change they want to see in the world. And it's not something they hold in their hands. It is not some pamphlet they hand to someone else or some video they record. It's them. An activist is the change. Through their actions, through their, their kindness, their compassion, their consideration, their thoughtfulness, they change because they act that way. They, they, put, they put into the world actions that affect other people, right? I mean, you're all sitting here today. If, if one of you were to stand up and, and swing your arms about, well, you'd block the view of someone else. You'd affect the people behind you. You might distract someone. See, all the actions that we do affect people around us, whether or not we want to calculate that or admit that. And, and that plays an important part. It's sort of like the ripple in the pond. So, so that you throw a rock in a pond and then there's a ripple that spreads out and it affects all the way to the other edge of the pond. And there's, you know, th that sort of thing happens in real life too. It's not just something that happens in, in sort of a, uh, a very literal and uh, sort of a, a physical sense. It's, it's more emotional. It's more intellectual. There's, there's layers here because we are thinking and feeling people. And so earlier tonight, we had a, uh, a, a panel talking about media. And uh, it got to the discussion about the people who are here who are statists. Now, I don't like using the word statist because I don't like collectivizing. I, don't, I, think, I believe that there are individuals. I can prove that with science, that we have individuals. But I can't prove that these individuals are part of a group. Right? I, I can't sit there and say that all of these individuals are in this group and therefore I can do X to this group. I mean, that's just silly. That's, it, that doesn't follow. It's not like, 
It's like saying that all cops are bad. No, not all cops are bad. There's, there's certainly, there's good, there's good people in any, any group of, of whatever you wish to calculate as a group. And it's the same that there are. Yeah, there's, you know what, not all activists are good. It's the same thing. Yes, there's good activists, and there's, yes, there's bad activists too. It's not activists, it's individuals. So strip away the police, strip away the bureaucracy, strip away that fiction that they want you to believe, because really that's what it comes down to, is a fiction. You know, you, you are given this, this whole philosophy of the state and really, it's just a fairy tale. It's words on paper. The laws are just words on paper. The statutes are just words on paper. The construction of the state, the, the constitution, all of these things are just words on paper. How is this any different than a book? A fiction. This, this whole thing is just some sick novel of torture and danger and betrayal and it doesn't have to be that way. Because if we come back to the individual, we come back to you own yourself, right? Strike at the root again. I mean, that's, that's the, the, one of the tenets of the libertarian and voluntarist and anarchistic philosophies is you own yourself. That's, that's a really big, really big concept to a lot of people. They've never thought of that. And so you're communicating with other, other individuals. You want, to, you want to persuade them that liberty is the way, that, that being free is more profitable, more better. I guess that's a poor phrasing of that statement, but I'll move on. But the thing is, is you confront them with this simple idea that you own yourself, and they can't digest that. You need to talk to them in a way that they understand. If you want to change someone's mind, if you want to communicate a message, if you want someone to think or believe the way that you want to think, you can't use your head. You've got to put their shoes on. You've got to think from how they understand things. Because a lot of the, the problems that come with this activism approach is the communication. Yes, we don't like to say our friend was arrested for doing something peaceful. No, he was caged. And sure, we understand I, the visceral reaction to seeing my friend carried off to a cage. I want to use the word caged. They did this man wrong. I've watched friends get carried away in the cop cars. I've watched Pete get dragged by his arms, carried literally with his arms handcuffed behind his back. I've watched all this stuff. It's, it's, it is caging, it is mean, it is vile, it is cruel, but the thing is, is that if I want to communicate to other people who aren't, aren't in this circle of friends, I need to use a language they understand. I need to talk in terms that they can digest. Because otherwise my message is just useless. I'm just, I'm just speaking for the sake of my own voice. If, if what I say to someone isn't processed and interpreted then why am I wasting my time? So language is important. Being the change is important. Your actions, how you carry yourself. And a lot of people are like, oh, you're, just, you're dressed up, dressed up, yes. Yes, because you know what? Image has a lot to do with the society and whether or not I like that, it doesn't change the fact that if you dress nice, people treat you differently. You look back to Dr. Martin Luther King. You want to talk about activism. You know, his activists that sat in, and these sit-ins, you heard about these sit-ins. Those activists were trained. Not just anybody was allowed to do these sorts of activism. He trained these people by putting them in a room surrounded by their friends, and they were abused and made fun of. And those folks that could take it without lashing back were the ones that allowed to do the activism. And they were all dressed nice. Sunday's best, is that, that's the way they used to call it. Yeah, they were dressed in suits, looking good, respectable. Their attitude, their demeanor, their tone was one of peace and pride in their, and dignity in, the, in their own person. And that goes a long way. And I, 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 would, I love wearing 
cheesy clothes, you know, jeans and a t-shirt. Yeah, it's so comfortable. But it's, it's like, I'm doing a job. I'm doing a job right now. I'm trying to change the world. I'm not trying to fix a car. I'm not trying to get to a, my dentist appointment on time. I'm trying to change the fucking world. And so that requires a little bit more effort. That requires a little bit more commitment than meeting your dentist appointment on time. And that's, that's, the, that's the idea behind it. Great people aren't great because of destiny, as I said. They're great because they've chosen to commit a great action. They have put into motion a great conclusion. They've executed a great plan. That's why they're great. It's what they've done that makes them great. It's not how they look. But you know what? Unfortunately, looks matter so much. I wish it wasn't so. I wish, I wish we didn't have a culture that was, that was predicated on, on, on achieving a certain image and proportion and symmetry. But we have that. So I'm working within that, just like Michael Sylvia, our esteemed representative, is working within the system to affect change. We each have our different way of doing things. And it's beautiful. So we have great people like Mike who support what's going on here in Keene, the Robin Hooding, the civil disobedience, the dance, the Ill illegal dance parties. Derek, Jay, you are just an evil man. You held that dance party without permission from the king. But you know what? That was a great action. It seemed small at the time. I remember that. I was in a wheelchair. I had a broken foot. It was terrible. I was running the CAC. Miserable as could be with a broken foot. And we were going to go to a dance party, and Derek was all excited. And like, we got music, and we got lights. And everyone, you know what? We had this mindset of innocence, of children, of just sheer joy. And we just went to this dance party like, we're just going to dance and have fun. And it wasn't, it wasn't like we're going to smash the state. There was none of that. There was, it was like, if, if there was any of that, it was, it, was a, it was the sauce on the side of the entree. But we went there, and we acted like peaceful, dignified people who are living free. And the state did what they did. And I'm sure you've probably seen it in Derek J's victimless crime spree. But they, they acted in a way that made them look really bad. And, and, and you know what? From a PR standpoint for activists, that's good. It's not good for Derek J. It's certainly not good for the activists that had to see their friend, close friend, be abused by the, the police employees. But you know what? In the, in the end, it revealed just how cruel and brutal they really are. And that's important. Because there's this mythology. I talked about programming, and I'll come back to that. Programming. So I did a TV news show in Keene. And before I did the show, I talked at length with the, uh, the director of the cable news station. And, and he kind of taught me about TV news. And, and it came down to programming. And that's really what it's about. You see, people are used to digesting your message, your communication in a certain way, but they're also used to digesting news in a certain way. You see, there's a format you follow. And it's the same format used by every news station. And as, as twisted as that may sound, it works. People receive their news in this fashion, and they trust it to be news because it was read by a man today. 50 people showed up to the Keenvention convention in Best Western. Of the people, many were having a great time, and it's just this, this, this announcement, like what I'm saying is fact. Like they could be lying to you, it doesn't matter. They could be telling you a bold-faced lie. They could be say, this room is black, it's got curtains that are on fire, and later on, we'll be serving boiled duck. 
And it, it doesn't matter because the tone they use, the format of the television, the format of the cuts, the video editing, the chi Chiron at the bottom of the screen, the little logo in the corner that flips around and says W something 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 news station. It's the same on every channel that serves news up. It's like McDonald's. When you go to McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's, it's the same thing. It's a burger joint. They're going to serve you burgers. You used to serve. You want burgers, you go to McDonald's. You want news, you go to a news station. And it's the same news station. So, so I was like, okay, freaking TV is going to look just like a news channel. I will go that extra effort and I will try to make it look like the same news channel everyone else is expecting. But my news is different. Look, I'm not going to hide my bias. You're going to get bias from my TV news show. I'm all front about that. It's Free Keen TV. If you've not gone to the Free Keen blog, you should. Because it's a great blog run by the esteemed, esteemed Ian, of course. Um, but there's, there's, there's something that comes with that, that the bias is very clear. We're about freedom. So that's what I did for the TV show. And it was a sort of, it was a sad lesson. You know, because I... You, you want to think that people are, you want to think that people are smart. You want to think that people are better than this. You want to think that, 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 no. Let me tell you, there are some very smart people. There are some brilliant people. And then there are some stupid people. I, I mean, that's just how it is. And, and what makes someone stupid? Well, I mean, you can have your own sub subjective determination and you, you sure have some IQ tests. Some, if you believe violence is the solution, you're probably pretty stupid. I know that's harsh. That's harsh, isn't it? If violence is your solution to this problem, you're probably stupid. Because a creative and intelligent person will come up with a creative and intelligent solution. That's just their natural inclination. They see, they see a problem and they see an, an opportunity to learn, to grow. But someone who just, it, it, they don't want to grow they're comfortable with their station in life. They're comfortable with their, their situation. They're comfortable in the fact that they paid for their protection racket. Yeah, I got my license plate. It's all paid. I paid my tax. I pay my fair share. And they're comfortable in that. And they like that. They like the fact that they're part of the tax-paying, regular, law-abiding citizen. I'm just a tax-paying, law-abiding folk. And they're, they, you know what? That's their... They're happy with that. But you know, I don't think they know of any alternatives. I mean, they, they know about that one, right? That one's pretty well set. But do they know of anything else? Where else are they going to hear about alternatives to that lifestyle? Where else are they going to hear about alternatives to that sort of mindset? They don't get any alternatives. You get what the programming gives you. And the programming gives you, you should be... 16 pounds underweight and have clothes that are just too small for you and buy this car, watch this sports team, drink this beverage, and shut the fuck up. That's what they get. And you know what? They're going to eat that up. But that's what an activist comes into the scene. They come into the scene and they say, listen, <laughs> it doesn't have to be that way. You see, I'm trying it this way. It's a little different, it's strange, but you know, I kind of like it. You should try it too. I mean, just give it a shot. You know what, just give freedom a shot. You know, like people are at the bar and they're like, you know, there's this new alcohol and it's, let's just do a shot and see how it works. Well, that's the same way activists are. They're like, give freedom a shot. Just, you know what, let's try it. How about you, how about that ticket, you just fight it. You're just like, you know what, you know the ticket's some bullshit. Just fight it, take it to court. And that person takes the ticket to court. And if, if whether, whether they win or lose, it, it's irrelevant. The fact that they took the effort to fight that means they had courage. And we come back to the fearlessness. Keen activism is all about conquering that fear of the state. Conquering that fear of the consequences. I mean, it sucks. Wouldn't it suck to get beat up, to be thrown in a cage? You couldn't do anything? Like Rich Paul right now, banging his head against the wall, sitting in a cage because he decided that selling plants 
to people was, was a, a form of business he wanted to engage in. It sucks. But at the same time, what he and other people like him and other activists who did other things is they can give inspiration to other people. And inspiration breeds courage, and courage breeds the next activist, and then it's just this cyclical effect, this feedback loop of courage and inspiration. So people are watching Dave Ridley. I moved here, Dave Ridley, this is a great little thing. Dave Ridley was sitting here, not here, in Manchester actually, uh, Murphy's Tap Room, and he had a gun on his hip. In this video, and this cop was asking him questions, Dave was on the phone, Porcupine 411, you all know that number? So Dave's on the phone, and he's, he's giving this, this whole spiel to Porcupine 411, a documentation of his interaction with the police. And then finally, Roger comes out of tap room, and he starts video recording. And then Russell Canning comes in to the picture and does this hilarious, hilarious thing. So the cop, one of the cops is standing there just with his arms crossed, you know, like he, he was a Manchester cop. The other guy was a Department of Safety officer. And the Department of Safety officer didn't know gun laws in New Hampshire, clearly. And so, anyway, fast forward. Dave runs his hand right in front of the officer, like this. And the officer, it's, you know, maybe a foot and a half in front of his face. And in other places, that might get you shot. Because, <laughs> you know, they shoot people for the least amount of things these days. But that courage affected so many people to move here and to be a part of what's going on here. I'm one of those people. And I know of several people at that same time that moved shortly thereafter to the Free State Project because of that courage. Because someone took a stand. See, here, here's the thing. I was a meetup organizer for Ron Paul's 2007 campaign for all of Greater Milwaukee. That's 1.5 million people. And uh, in our meetup group, we had 150 people. So I'm the, the guy in charge. It just ended up that way. There was an opening. I was a doer. I did it. So 150 people in this group. And, and I'm just like, Ron Paul, Ron Paul. You, some of you remember 2007. Ron Paul was just like, it, it was like a drug that you were loading. And maybe, maybe you know 2012 better or 2011 better. But it was just this, this awesome new drug, Ron Paul and Liberty. Oh, my God, Liberty. I had never discovered this before, this word. I had a sense for it. You know, I, I was always sort of an anarchist. I always did my own thing. I just didn't know what word to put there to describe it. I just didn't know. And so Ron Paul gave me that word and instantly activated me. And I was like full bore activist. That's, this is what I do. I get Ron Paul elected. So meet up organizer in Milwaukee, making events. Sine waves, like hanging signs, uh, paint the town Ron, you know, like just, just all kinds of stuff. Going to gun shows, and, and it's just like if I could get four people to show up out of this 150 people meetup group, I was excited, and no one would show up. They all were on the internet, though. They sure were helpful on the internet, you know. They were commenting on forum posts and starting their blogs, and, you know, their Facebook page said something about Ron Paul, I guess. But when it came to actually doing, no one in Milwaukee really wanted to do anything. And then I saw footage about New Hampshire and people were doing something. So I was like, I'm moving to New Hampshire. Screw you guys. You had your chance. I'm moving here. And it was a leap of faith in a way. You know, you, you, you move to this sort of place. I had $500 and whatever I could fit in my car. I wouldn't recommend that. It was, a, it was a very trying experience, but I, I guess I just love to be set on fire by life. So anyway, uh, I moved in with Russell and Kat, and a Ron Paul Republican. Do you guys remember that, Ron Paul Republicans? You're not a Republican, but you're a Ron Paul Republican, okay? There's a differentiation going on here. He's, he's more hardcore. But anyway, so I moved in with Russell and Kat Canning, and uh, so I voted in the primary for Ron Paul, and he lost to John McCain. And I was heartbroken. I mean, come on, I put all this time and energy. I moved for this guy, and he, he, just, he didn't move. And what the, what, why? 
And so Russell and Kat, I don't know if you know about them, but they are two of the people that are extremely inspirational for the Liberty Movement in Keene. And so I live with these individuals, David Krauss, Dave Ridley for a spell, and the, these, these anarchistic philosophies they spouted were too strong for me to combat. The logic was too good. So Ron Paul Re Republican quickly faded away, and I'm just hardcore anarchist. I don't care if the word sounds bad. I'm going to redefine it through my actions. Right? I'm going to say, yes, I'm an anarchist. Do I look like an anarchist? Because this is what an anarchist looks like. If you thought I didn't, you were wrong. Because this is what an anarchist looks like. See, the beautiful part about free market economics, anarchy, that sort of stuff, it's really, it comes down to one factor. It's really simple. We, sh we say strike the root, right? Strike the root. What is that factor? Time. Really, that's it. Because your time is how you spend your life, right? Whether you work your job and get money for that time, whether you spend it with someone that you care about and get love for that time, whether you spend it with some friends and get happiness for that time, it's all about time. And so you have to take that time and make it profitable. And that's where free market economics comes into this. Profit from your time. It's critical. There's so much, we talked earlier at the, the media thing, yes, video editing. Yeah, any, anyone here could learn how to edit video. I'll tell you what, no one here can learn how to edit video to the point where they can do it for free. Because it, it takes time. You want to make a great video, it's going to take your time. And if you're not making money to put food on your table, it's taking your life as well. So, after my s roughly six years here in New Hampshire, getting to the core of this speech, sustainable activism is critical. Activism where you can either give so little of your time that you have enough left over to actually make money to put food on your table, or you make money from your activism. Now, there aren't very many people who are very successful making money from their activism. Of them, the outstanding ones, clearly, Ian, Mark, Free Talk Live, an awesome form of activism plus a job. I mean, really, you can't get any better than that. I think that is like the primo slot of getting paid to do activism is doing what Mark and Ian do. So I racked my brain, racked my brain, how to get paid to do activism. Well, I'm here with the Free State Project, right? So I moved to Manchester, and I'm thinking all this stuff through after burn, being burned out from activism. Just literally after I ran the CAC and Free Keen TV, I was just done. You know, doing, doing all this work for no pay, it just, it, it, it burns you out. And so we started Free State Now. It will. And the idea behind that being that we would pay people to get signers. And it's an experiment. You know, sustainable activism is an experiment on all levels. So we started that and it, it, the idea is simple. You get results, you get paid. No one gets paid until they get results. So I ran that. It was fun. Got distracted a lot. Life. Started a podcast. Got a full-time job. Now I'm running the, the Quill in Manchester. And Free State now is it's definitely continuing. We want to... Really, I want to move it into someone's hands who is more active than I or has more time available. But the idea of sustainable activism is still something that's important that we should talk about. Because there's a lot of free activism that happens. There are some wonderful people. Carla and Shem. Outstanding. <laughs> These two individuals get more signers than anyone I know. They, they actualize change in the world. And it's a pain in the bed, I'm sure. Traveling to some event out of state, 
on a weekend when you're not working, getting signage for the Free State Project, that's a hell of a deal. They're not getting paid. They do that because they believe in the idea. And it, 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 the reward is completion of that idea. And sure, that's a great reward. But until you, you know, if, if your activism is, is causing you to be in debt, that's not sustainable. And libertarian philosophy would tell you that if you're doing something unsustainable, you should stop doing that. It's really simple. So, we want to get movers here. We want to change the world. Right now, I think a big thing that I'm reading about is secession. And we talked a little bit here. I know Texas, some other states in that area are talking about secession, and there's like, they're, you know, they're, that it goes around every once in a while in sort of a cyclical nature, and the secession talk, when people are pissed off at whoever the president is at the time. But I think, I think that's a real solution. Now, obviously times have changed since the Civil War. Secession, you know, sometimes you say secession around people and they're all of a sudden they think a bloody civil war. Well, it doesn't have to be a bloody civil war. We're not in that age anymore. We're not in that mindset anymore. And for more, we have the internet. We can, we can resolve disputes and communicate so easily with the internet right now. That is the number one activist tool there is. The ability to communicate through the internet, to share your ideas, to spread your videos, to spread your memes. The internet is a solution in many regards to how to change hearts and minds, how to get people to move here, how to coordinate with other activist groups elsewhere. And then you have some key events here in New Hampshire. Getting people to show up at Pork Fest, Liberty Forum, and now Keenvention, and I'm hoping that this is the first of many Keenventions. Um, once again, kudos to Ian for putting this all together. I know this is probably a lot of work. That's the other thing. There are, there are a few doers who do a lot of the work. And there, you know, there's, there's like a core group of doers, and then there's a core group of supporters, and then there's the other the sort of activists. And sure, they do, a, they do a lot of stuff. I'm not disparaging anything. We just need more doers, that's all. We just need more people to move here and to just take over projects. We need people that want to edit the video that Mark was talking about. So reaching these people, how to do this, how to reach these people, how to convince them to move, how to be the change you want to see in the world. Well, there's, there's a ton of different answers for that solution. I think you should do whatever you feel you are most capable of doing, whatever you're best at. What is it that you do that you really enjoy doing? How can you make that work for spreading the ideas of liberty? Really, that's what you should start at. Start at what you're good at. Start at what comes easy, what you enjoy. And sure, jumping into another sort of career of activism and learning video editing, if you don't, you've never done it before, Learning podcasting, if you've never done it before, it's great learning experience. But you can't look at that as your solution. It's just a learning experience until you love doing it. It's just an experience that's going to gain new skills, new confidence, new ideas, expose you to a new perspective, which is a beautiful thing. But figuring yourself out is key. So this all comes back to the individual. This is about each of you as individuals and figuring out who you are, what you want, what you like, what you desire. If you haven't figured yourself out yet, you really ought to take some time and research that. Research yourself. There's all kinds of topics. Sure, you could learn about what, what Mises says. You can learn about what uh, some economic philosophy is. You can learn about uh, different types of uh, property rights and, and, and different ways to solve the roads problem because, you know, who will build the roads? That's a big thing. You got to figure yourself out first, though. And a lot of people don't focus enough on that because it's tough. 
It's boring sometimes. But if you don't know who you are and what you want, how do you know you're, you're going to achieve happiness? How do you know you're going to get what, what's going to make you a healthy, happy, wonderful individual if you don't know what you really want or where you really want to go? So strike the root. The root is you as an individual. Each of you. And this is so critical, and it's so overlooked. And it, you know what? It's cheesy. Sure, it's cheesy. Be the change. Yeah. No, it's not cheesy. It's reality. It's simple. But it's so powerful because it is simple. And so here in New Hampshire, you have a wonderful support network. You can be all that you can be. To steal a phrase from the statists, the military, the army, you can be all that you can be here in New Hampshire. That's right. Because this place will give you courage, inspiration. This place will give you support, love, communication. This place will, will allow you to become a wonderful, awesome person. If you choose to be that person. And that's kind of what we're selling. It's hard to explain that. You don't put that on a literature. You, you got this don't take the, take the plea deal. What, on the back of this don't take the plea, it's like, and uh, by the way, if you uh, hang out with us, you'll probably be a lot happier. I mean, why don't you just put that? You know what? Your life will probably be better. Just a pamphlet, and, it, and it's, it's one page, really big, really big. It just opens up, and it says, are you really happy? If not, come hang out with us. Really, that's simple. Changing hearts and minds, you make it sound all complicated. You make it sound like, oh, my God, I'm solving a Rubik's Cube with a blindfold on. No. You're just talking to someone. You're just hanging out. You're having a drink. You're letting them commiserate with you and rant about how, oh, I'm so upset I got this parking ticket. Or, oh, I'm so upset that I, my property tax is up, you know, 25%. Yes, that's all it is, is talking. Being there for them. Oh, my God. You're there for someone. You're a friend. That's an activist. And you don't need to hold a sign or have a pin on your shirt you don't even need to have a project. You don't need to have something to pimp or a, a business card. No. You just need to be a human being. You just need to show you care. That's really it. Because you do care. If you didn't care, you wouldn't be here right now. You care, and that's a good thing. And you should be proud of that. And you should have confidence in who you are because of that. You should each be confident people. Because you know the truth of this situation. You know taxes are theft. You know you own yourself. You know that this coercive, violent force, this monopoly on violence that is the state, is, is, is wrong. Do you know how many people don't even realize this, this is an idea? Do you know how many people are so far behind this curve that you can't even talk to them? You should each be very confident, strong individuals because you have power, you have knowledge. And you have courage because you have support. You have a community behind you. You have people that genuinely care and love you. And most of all, you should be active because you realize there's something wrong. And you realize that you can change the world. Now you don't have to change the whole world, not all at once like a light switch. Just change the people around you. I went into work at this, this place. I told you I worked for three years. So the first like year, I didn't talk anything about liberty. I just did my job. That's it. I was building machines, they were really high tech, it was a really awesome job. I, that's all I did, I went into work and did my job. So about the first year, that's about it. After about the first year, I got 
cocky, I guess, with the situation and uh, activism, whatever. I started being more overt about my ideas and feelings and thoughts. And eventually I became known as the rebel in the shop. Yet they all, by that point, had grown fond of me. They all really liked me as a friend, as a, as a co-worker, okay? Because I, I, I try to be likable. And so once I, I sort of came out to them, <laughs> talking about it like, like, uh, like talking about, you know, coming out to your parents about being gay. Uh, Mom and dad, guess what? Uh, yeah, I'm not religious. Oh, yeah, sorry about that one. Even more so, I don't believe in the state. Yeah, how many, of, how many of you have talked to your parents like that? How many, how many of you have told your parents you don't believe in the state? Just raise your hand. How'd that go over? Terribly. Because they're in that mythology, that programming. That, that's what they know. They don't have an alternative. You, you present them with an alternative, and it's, it's like you're, you're, you're telling them about Rapunzel and something about her hair and, and like climbing her sh a beanstalk, and oh my God, I got lost down the rabbit hole of metaphors. But coming out to your coworkers after they already like you is changing hearts and minds. So that's one way. Everyone has some little thing they do in the community and they interact with people and they, you know, they might just cover up the fact that, that they're a free stater because you know, some people have negative thoughts about free staters. I guess what? You're going to piss some people off. You need to. You want to. You want to piss people off. Because they're going to do something about it. If you don't piss someone off in these days, they're just going to ignore you. They're just going to be like, oh, whatever. Back to my, uh, my uh, Candy Crush saga. Where are they? Where are they? <laughs> Back to Facebook. Because God knows everyone spends their time on Facebook. Piss people off. Yeah. Because you know what? It's past time of being pissed off. You should, you that song network, or that, that movie network, where it's like you, you yell out your window, I'm, I'm angry and, and God damn it, I'm not going to take it anymore. Yeah. It's well past that time. When you saw Bearcats rolling down Boston and people holding assault rifles, leading people out of their homes. And people chanting USA. Was that time to shout out your window? No, no, it was past the time of shouting out your window. We're, we can't do that. There's, there, there's, there's no shouting out the windows that's going to solve our problem anymore. It's too late. What you can do, each of you, it's very easy. Just interact with the people you meet on a daily basis. The gas station attendant, the person who serves you food, the, the guy at the, the clothing store, your, your dry cleaner, your vet. You're interacting with people all the time. And if you represent yourself to be a good, decent person, and you start sharing ideas with them, you're going to affect them. Maybe not right away. Maybe they don't even like the idea, but they pass it on to someone they think might. It's little things like that. You need that network beyond the activists. You need to have connections in your community. I'll tell you what. I started running the CAC, and one of the first things I did within the first like week and a half, two weeks, I went around to the neighbors. And if 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 all you've been to the CAC, you know, there's there's sort of neighbors, a good six, seven, eight neighbors in the, the general circle around the house. I just went up, and said hi. That's it. It's like, hey, I'm JJ. I'm running this thing over here. If you have any problems, here's my phone number. Two of those neighbors. Two of those neighbors out of the seven were blown away because I was the first person in 25 years to come by and say hi. That's it. I earned their respect just by saying hi because no one else from that house had come over in 25 years to say hi. 
So yeah, I'm, I could throw a party in that house. They're not going to, you know, they're going to call my phone. They're not going to do anything wrong. I said hi. I was a neighbor. You know, and, and you, you see, like in Manchester, you're surrounded, I'm living in Manchester in an apartment thing, and I'm surrounded by other apartments, and there's so many people stacked in these houses. How can you possibly know everyone? Well, you can't, but you could try. You could try just saying hi to your neighbors. You could try just, you know what? You, you pass this person six out of seven days a week. You don't even know their name. You don't know who they are. Just say hi. Start the conversation. And sure, it's tough. Maybe you're an introvert and you want to just get home and you just got off work and, oh, you had a crappy day. You know what? what they, they, maybe they had a crappy day too. And maybe you say hi to them and you have like a two-minute conversation and you feel good about yourself. It's those little things. The activist is always an activist. They're always... Because here's the thing, when you know the truth, when you have this knowledge, when you realize there's a man behind the curtain, you can't, you can't deny this, you can't shut it out of your mind, you can't ignore this, this knowledge. It, it lives through you and it wants to get out. It wants to rush out of your body and tell the world that, hey, listen, there's a guy behind the curtain and he's not really cool. So let it... Let this knowledge pour forth. Be the vessel for this knowledge. Share it with the people around you. Be a neighbor to your neighbors. I mean, go home maybe not today because we got some parties later tonight that you really want to attend. It's good times. But go home after this convention and just say hi to your neighbors. If you never said, if you, you never just walk up and say hello. I just wanted to say hi. My name's so-and-so. And I hope you have a great day. That's it. You can write it on a card if it helps you. But you will impress that person and you will gain influence over them. And now you can start persuading them about the ideas of liberty. Now, now if your music's too loud, maybe the neighbor has a problem, they'll come over and talk to you instead of calling the cops. Or maybe if they have a question, maybe they see someone at your car, instead of just letting it go, they'll be like, huh, I wonder what's going on. And they'll, maybe they'll watch your car. Maybe if your door's left open, they're going to go and close it for you. It's these little things that's changing the world. Each of those things changes the world. You are being the change you want to see in the world by being a good neighbor. Because it's, it's the free market. You want to be surrounded by good neighbors, right? No one wants to have a shitty neighbor. The guy who, who he like shooting off his gun at three in the morning, his dog keeps barking, and uh, his kids play in my yard. Yeah, that's a great neighbor. Yeah, I want that neighbor. No. But at the same time, you have to get to know these people. Because maybe they're not, maybe he isn't a bad neighbor. Maybe you could influence him. Maybe you could change his mind and his heart. And changing hearts and minds, sure. William, William doesn't agree with that. That's great. We should have different points. We should disagree so we can talk about this. We should disagree on a lot of topics so that we discuss them and make them better. Disagreement will evolve an idea to make it stronger or better or maybe dismiss it altogether. So conversations, saying hi to your neighbor, discussing philosophies, communicating, being the change. Being the change, being the change, being the change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Repeat it over and over again. Take it to heart. It's not, it's, it's not like we're, it's not like I'm talking about performing open heart surgery. What do you want the people around you to be like? Be like that. That's it. You want the people to be respectful, cool, you want to be someone that you can hang out with or maybe you have a problem? Be that person. Be the helpful person. And so, keen activism. It's been a wild ride. Back during Derek J's Victimless Crimes Free Days, right around that time, there was a lot of heavy activism going on. 
and a lot of people were getting arrested for doing various things. Um, court cases were going on. Uh, suspended sentences were hung over people's heads. It was a tough time. One thing I talk about Keene, and people you know, remark about the, the CAC and whatnot, and Keene parties hard. Keene lives hard. Because while you might go to Keene and have some fun partying or 420 in Central Square, all these good times, the bad times are equally as heinous as the good times are good. Watching your friend get carried off and carted into a cop car, watching, watching your friends at a trial in a courtroom where you know they, they have everything stacked against them, watching your friends suffer under uh, some jail sentence where you're conversing with them through a monitor. You know, this is some hard times. So activism isn't all butterflies and daisies. There's some really, really hard times dealing with this. It's the dynamic. It's interesting to sort of observe. So you have these, these lows where, where individuals in jail, horrible life situation, blah, blah, blah. And then smoking a joint in the police station lobby is probably right about here. Because that was pretty much... And, you know, yes, that's controversial and... and uh, I don't advise that, but I'll tell you what, nothing felt more badass than watching folks smoke a joint in a police station lobby and get away with it. I'll tell you what, that re redefined my idea of keen activism. Keen activism is all about pissing people off and being controversial, getting in your face, making news, and making you question everything. It's wonderful. And it's not for everyone. So as I moved to Manchester, naturally there's a lot of people in Manchester that take issue with some keen activism. And I'm hanging out with these people now. And it's sort of a strange situation how some, some individuals will, they'll talk, they'll talk about keen around me in a way that makes me think, they don't realize I live there. So I'm privy to a lot of very real information. But my, my argument, time and again, I'm not gonna name names or talk, stab anyone in the back or talk behind back, no, that's not my thing. My point is this. I explain to these people that what Keen is doing is extremely valuable. I use this example. Is Chris Cantwell here? Is he here? Is that here? I thought he was here. Here's an example. Chris Cantwell does some really really out there activism stuff. As far as the ideas he's purporting, they are at the very top of the, the sort of idea range. You know, talking about shooting cops and shooting state reps or whatever, shooting people is generally at the very top of any sort of discussion. But what that provides is an important benchmark. You see, this is Cantwell. It's a benchmark we can measure. We can measure the, the extreme language he uses. We can measure the, the you know, syllables and all that sort of stuff. We can measure it, right, with science. Well, this is what's on Free Keen Block. It's not nearly as bad, or if you view it bad, or as extreme or radical as this. So, and then here's the Free Keen Block, and then down here is like the Manchester stuff. It's really not radical at all. It's really pretty much, we're going to get someone elected and we're going door to door with lit. Which is pretty much, you know, that's, that's normal politics. That's normal, everyday politics. But, Cantwell, Free Keen, Manchester. This is important. These are benchmarks. These are measurable points that we can refer to in a logical discussion to delineate the difference between these benchmarks and say, would you rather deal with him or with him? Which one do you want to deal with? We can send this guy after you and he can talk to you all day long with his camera or we can send this guy. 
Oh, you want to deal with this guy? Well, you have to sweet the deal a little bit then. You want to deal with these guys, you got to play ball. Or you get these guys, in worst case, you get these guys. You know what I'm saying? That's important. Look, there's some hardcore activists out there. And there's Dave Ridley asking for ambush interviews. I'm not really an ambush interview person myself, but I like it because it keeps those people on their toes. I think it's important to have extremists. It's important to have radicals. It's important to have tactics that are unconventional and that make even you question what you think is right or just or moral. We should always be questioning what is moral or just or right. We should always remain skeptical. We should always seek a better argument, a better answer. And so we get back to activists, we get back to strike the root, and this brings me to the most important message I have tonight. Every activist, no matter who you are, what you do, needs one vitamin, critically. And that vitamin is humility. I can't overestimate this, or overstress this, or over anything this, humility is extremely important because humility allows us to continue to be skeptical. It allows me to say, I'm not good enough yet. I can always be better. My idea isn't perfect, it can be better. Because the moment you think you have the right idea, the moment you think you are right, the moment you think you are best, you stop learning, you stop growing, you stop evolving. Humility will keep you growing and evolving and changing. It is absolutely critical. And the bonus, this is great, because this comes back to interacting with people. The bonus of humility is that if you're a humble person, people are more receptive to you. They're more likely to interact with you. They're more likely to, to, to give you the benefit of the doubt. If you come up to someone, no matter what situation it is, and you act just like an asshole, a jerk, you know, you're probably not going to be received very well. But if you come up to someone and you're humble and you're nice, you're, you're kind, you're considerate, you can probably change that person's mind if you tried. And that, that's, that, that whole changing mind thing, it's not that difficult. It just comes down to your actions. It comes down to how you are. So humility is, is one of the keys. I stress to everybody, even myself, every day. It's easy to have an ego. It's easy to, to sit here and look at your past accomplishments and, and what you've done and be like, well, greatest thing since something, something. No, you're not. A lot of the stuff I did I was inspired by other people and I built off of what they built. That quote, that if I seem great, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants, that quote is humanity. Humanity is great because it stood on the shoulders of other humans. That's really it. And so I talked earlier about, uh, in the media thing about Apple, I said, steal Apple. That's, that's what I tell everybody. Like the Lama Sioux Bitcoin boys, you know, the, uh, there's, there's Bitcoin companies starting out all over the place, and in, in Manchester especially. So the Lama Sioux guys are making their Bitcoin machine. I, I, I'm, hopefully you're all familiar with this. Um, and I said right off the bat, okay, steal Apple. Steal Apple's design methodology. You know, that, that smooth one-button push technology where it's just idiot-proof and it looks beautiful. Steal that. Everybody should steal from Apple. You know why? Because they're successful. That's why. They're successful. Clearly, what they're doing works. It's a market reaction. It comes back to economics. They're profitable. What they're doing is working. The market has spoken. Same thing with activism. So, like, I started Free State Now. Mark Edge actually started Free State Now many years ago. I think two or three years ago. And he had this phone drive thing. And my idea was to take the phone drive thing to the next level. And that's kind of what I did. I, Mark handed off the baton to me. Free State Now brand was already achieved. 
think the website was already there, blah, blah, blah. I just sort of added my influence into it and carried it to the next level. There's a lot of that stuff that can go on here in, in New Hampshire, the Shire, the Free State, whatever you want to call it. Call it home. That's really what you should call it. And I think don't, you know, it's, it's put the pride aside. Once again, humility. Put the pride aside. You can do so much more when you're not so worried about how <sighs> this, this overflated self-image of who you are. No, you don't have to think that. You can be great by doing great things. So, I don't know how much time I have left. You're 20 over. I'm 20 over. <laughs> well, geez. I'm so sorry about that. So I, I was like, I was like uh, you know, so I'm dressing up, and, the, and part of the reason I'm dressing up, to be honest, um, besides trying to class up the image and, and try to be the change in a different direction, I was reading a lot of old romance, uh, romance and in that they were written during the Romantic period, blah, 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 things like that. Reading a lot of old books, basically, and The Gentleman. The Gentleman is always brought up in these books. A lot of them are French. Uh, Three Musketeers, uh, Count of Monte Cristo, that sort of stuff. And this, this idea of the gentleman, the honorable, and the fact that honor is, is so valued and talked about, and, and, and it just seems like it's something that has gone away from our society. I mean, we don't talk about honor anymore. And when's the last time you heard anyone mention anything about honor? Or even say the word? I, I can't recall, other than myself bringing it up in conversation about what I would talk about with the speech, not really anyone. But honor is, is an important part of the free market because it speaks to reputation. And so as we, as we transfer or, or transition or transform into the free market of tomorrow, we're getting back to reputation. We're getting back to honor. I think that's a critical, critical thing to acknowledge. Now, we always talk about reputation. Reputation is key here in New Hampshire. You move here as part of the Free State Project or whatever. Your reputation will, will elevate you to the highest levels or, or sink you to the greatest depths. And it's all based on your actions. So honor. Being extra special. Being a gentleman. Being greater than is critical because it's too easy to get lulled into the average, the mediocre, the, 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 the blah. You know what I'm saying? It's too easy to get lulled into sweatpants and a t-shirt. Because it's, 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 why not? You can do what you want. You can live the way you want. You can be the person you want, so why not sweatpants and a t-shirt? Screw it. It's comfortable. It's, it's fun, and I don't care because I got laundry to do. Whatever. Not giving anyone a hard time, believe me. I've done plenty of sweatpants and t-shirts. <laughs> but the point is this. I am expecting more from myself. I am trying to push myself to a higher level. And for me, it's in this area. Other people might be other areas. It's just an example. But that, that, that whole thing, it just, it, it, humility, admitting that you can be better, being the change you want to see in the world, realizing that the change you want to see in the world is going to change. That all goes hand in hand. It's, it's a big changing mess. And that's the beautiful part about it because the change you want to see in the world is going to change. My ideas of liberty have changed since I was a Ron Paul Republican. My ideas of private property have changed. I have a different sort of idea, philosophy, and it's still evolving. We're still looking for the answers. We're still looking to be the change, but the problem is the change keeps changing as well. So don't worry about it. It really doesn't matter. Just do something. That's it. Come up with a plan and execute. Thank you all so much.
Also give it up for Ian, come on. He's done a great job with this keen vention. like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters. <laughs> 